In the case of Team Pacific Corporation versus Parente, GR number 206789, another case penned by the bar chair, the Supreme Court highlighted the requisite of fair and reasonable criteria. In February 1999, Layla was hired to work as a production operator in the Hermetic Department of the Employer Corporation. Later, Layla was promoted to the position of Quality Assurance Calibration Technician. On the 23rd of April 2009, Layla filed for and commenced her 60-day maternity leave, which was to end on the 21st of June 2009. She gave birth on the 27th of April 2009. On the 8th of May 2009, while on her maternity leave, Layla was asked to see the employer's human resource and administrative manager. During their meeting on the 21st of May 2009, Layla received a letter informing her of her dismissal from employment effective on the 22nd of June 2009 or the day after the end of her maternity leave. She was told that she would receive her separation pay on the same date. The employer explained that it had to implement survival measures such as energy saving programs, forced leaves, and compressed workweek arrangements in view of the global economic crisis that started in the previous year. The employer added that it also suffered a 30% reduction in business volume resulting to substantial losses that threatened its survival. According to the employer, to minimize continuing losses and to ensure survival of the company, it had no alternative but to implement a retrenchment program. Layla then went to the Department of Labor and Employment where she was advised to first accept her separation pay before filing a complaint. Thus, on the 8th of June 2009, after she had been required to process her clearance and sign several documents, Layla received her separation pay. On the 9th of July 2009, Layla lodged her complaint for illegal dismissal against her employer. Was the dismissal from employment on the ground of retrenchment valid? The Supreme Court declared the illegality of Layla's dismissal from employment because it found that the employer failed to comply with all the requisites for a valid retrenchment. Record revealed that the employer submitted the following documents. 1. Audited financial statements for the years 2006 to 2009 showing its net losses and deficits amounting to millions. Number 2. Letter dated the 29th of April 2008 advising the Department of Labor and Employment of the compressed workweek arrangement it will be implementing. Number 3. Notice of retrenchment dated 8th of May 2009 served on the Department of Labor and Employment. Number 4. Duly accomplished establishment employment report received by the Department of Labor and Employment on 8 on the 8th of May 2009. Number 5, list of affected workers by displacements received by the Department of Labor and Employment on the 8th of May 2009. And number 6, the decision granting petitioners petition for corporate rehabilitation. Although the court acknowledged that these documents would suffice to show business losses and compliance with notice requirements, it nonetheless ruled that the employer failed to establish that the employees chosen for retrenchment were selected through fair and reasonable criteria. According to the court, the employer failed to prove that it used fair and reasonable criteria in carrying out the retrenchment program. It also failed to justify why it included Layla, who had already been employed for 10 years. The court thus ordered the employer to reinstate Layla to her former position and to pay her back wages.